first of all, many thanks to the organizers for the opportunity to present. I'll be talking about um, high intensity ultrasonic liquid processing on lab, bench, and industrial floors. There are many industries where ultrasound could be useful. This is just a short list and it really goes on. Uh, and the driving force behind the ultrasonic assistance to these things, to these processes, is of course cavitation, which has been talked about extensively in this uh, symposium. Briefly, it's the formation of vacuum bubbles that have the ability to later implode, creating microjets with tremendous forces uh, that uh, create mechanical effects, breaking particles, uh, making them drop um, Also, extreme physical conditions, high pressures, uh, extreme temperatures, which drives chemical process forward. Um, a typical conventional ultrasonic system meant for high amplitudes consists of a generator, um, a transducer, which converts the generator's electrical signal into mechanical vibrations, and then an ultrasonic horn, which delivers the vibrations to the liquid that you're processing and conditions the amplitude, amplifies the amplitude so that uh, the amplitude at this tip of the horn is much higher than what transducers can do by themselves. Uh, you can create high amplitudes this way, and many processes, not all, but many, require high amplitudes, otherwise either they're gonna be very slow or they won't occur at all. Uh, high amplitudes in liquids create cavitation clouds, and this is what drives the processes for. Uh, you can make very high quality products this way, you can improve um, the processes in the industry significantly. The equipment is relatively low cost compared to some other options that are available. Uh, it's very simple to set up and maintain, and it's versatile, uh, meaning the same piece of equipment could be used for different uh, processes and you don't have to modify it. Essentially. The problem comes here. Is this scalable? Or rather, is it directly scalable? Uh, what you don't want to happen is this. When you go from your lab research environment to the industry, and now you have to increase the size of the tip of the horn that creates the cavitation, because now you need a much larger cavitation zone, cavitation volume. What you don't want is to lose the amplitude that has directly to do with the intensity of cavitation that you're gonna get. And unfortunately, with conventional ultrasound, that's exactly what you get, because the tip size and the amplitude are not independent variables in the way that the horns are calculated with conventional methods. So, you, it looks like you're scaling up, but you're changing the conditions and probably losing the results that you optimized in the lab. Uh, this problem has been overcome with um, Arbel Horn ultrasonic technology, and I'll talk about this uh, technology a little bit later. Uh, what you can expect using this technology is you can increase the size of the tip of the horn and retain the amplitude that you have in the lab. In other words, whatever you do in the lab, you can expect to get exactly the same results just much faster and bigger volumes going to the industry. So this is the way scale should happen. This is direct scale. Uh, briefly, this is how it works. The simulation. This is how a typical high amplitude conventional horn moves. And this is how one of many different types of barbel horns. This is a halfway barbel horn. This is how that moves. You can see that the tip range, the, the amplitude of the tip is exactly the same, but the tip is bigger. Uh, you can increase the size of the tip from whatever the maximum tip you can achieve for a, a high amplitude, let's say 80 microns per meter or so. You can scale the size of this tip, increase its diameter by a factor of five to six easily. That gives you the area increase of about 30. 
but also because the entire tip moves and you have this area down here and another cavitation zone that happens above it because above it, it's also high amplitude. Uh, that's another doubling. So just going from this corner, you can expect to get scale up factors of 60 and exactly the same results as you can achieve in the lab. Uh, this is published work. Uh, the design principles of these devices are described, and uh, there's a reference here. So a typical way that industries get into novel processes or a process they, they want to now apply ultrasound to is they start in a small beaker, maybe 50 milliliters, and they use a conventional corn, and we offer a system, LSP 500, it's a 500 watt system. Uh, it's bigger than some other lab systems uh, in terms of power because after you've done this kind of work, you may want to scale it up and you may not yet want to purchase another system. So the same system allows you enough power to go to the first generation barbell horn. This is called the full weight barbell, barbell horn. It's longer. And the reason it's longer is, besides amplifying the amplitude, it also lets you get into larger beakers. So you can use easily a 300 to 500 or a liter sized uh, beaker and do a batch mode experiment, but also uh, we offer flow, flow through uh, reactor chambers or flow cells that fit nicely onto this flange that doesn't vibrate and it, it goes below the horn. Uh, then you can do flow through experimentation and uh, it's a way of scaling up, so you get a factor of three scale up just by doing that. Uh, scaling up beyond that, uh, you can switch to a BSP 1200 system, it's a 1200 watt system using halfway barbell horn that I showed uh, previously. Uh, normally this is used in a flow through mode. Uh, there's also a, a batch mode uh, container sort of insertion capability to it, but it's not very popular. And from there, another scale of factor of five, you go to an industrial scale system. This is almost always used in a flow through mode and you process a lot more material 60 times compared to what you started with, with the same results, same numbers. Uh, this is what the systems typically look like. Uh, LSP in the flow through mode with the first barbell horn. I'm not showing the, the simple beaker uh, scenario because it's very common, everybody knows what it looks like. So this is what the smallest flow through system looks like. This is the bench scale system. So you test here, you optimize here, then you go to commercial production and uh, everything becomes faster and bigger. Uh, beyond that, scale-up is still possible for a uh, very challenging process that require extremely high amplitudes. One thing that we do is put two horns face-to-face -face and make them operate in phase, uh, which means the cavitation zone here is um, created sort of simultaneously from two sides and that effectively intensifies uh, the zone further. Uh, so you can carry out things like wet milling, which is very challenging, but works really well in this scenario. And of course, you can put things in parallel or in series. This is a, a pretty popular cluster of uh, several systems put in series and several parallel lines of those series arrangements. And there's no, obviously no limit to how far you can go here. Uh, let me show you some results. Uh, this is a nanoemulsification experiment, and I have to apologize, I can't talk about a lot of the results that we have because we're under NDAs, we're working with industrial partners, but there are some things that, that we can mention and there's some representative results here. Uh, nano emulsions for pharmaceutical industry, this um, MF59 is an analog of a typical vaccine preparation. Uh, the required particle size is 250 nanometers for it and it's a squalene oil, it's a sharp oil uh, emulsified in water and then you put your active uh, vaccine substance into that. So um, this is what we get on all three scales. This um, is a representative experiment because it shows you what you get on the small scale, mid, uh, mid scale and large scale and you get to see that the data I showed for how the horns scale up is actually real. So at, on large scale you get the right result. So this is what you get um, as a function of processing rate. And you hit the target of 250 nanometers at approximately 50 milliliters per minute when you do it with the small small form. Uh, you get the same exact result with the BSP 1200, the, the medium system, approximately 11 times faster. 
as predicted from the area calculation. And when you go to industrial scale, you, you can get up to two and a half liters per minute. Same uh, result, so you get the same point. That's not a scale of factor of five, so overall you get a scale of factor of 55. This is also published work. Uh, the details are in this reference. Here's another system, soybean oil um, emulsion in water, and this is used for drug delivery or for flavoring beverages without changing their appearance because you can get to very small droplet sizes at which the emulsion is actually translucent or close to transparent. And when you, when you this is a concentrate, so when you dilute that further, it becomes completely transparent and you can put oil-based flavoring in your drink and you won't change uh, the appearance of the drink. Or it could be some sort of a bioactive or nutraceutical in your drink. Uh, this is also published work. Uh, here's some uh, wet milling or nanocrystallization experiments. Heart medicine, uh, nifedipine crystals. <coughs> in this experiment were milled from 33 microns to approximately 200 nanometers. And we got to the same result with the small system, the LSP, and the medium system. You can actually see that uh, the medium system performed slightly better, but the distribution is the same, uh, pretty much the same result, just scaled up. Uh, cell slate crystals, it's an anti-inflammatory. The reason uh, that you nanomill these things is bioavailability. The smaller the crystals in the tablet, which looks like a piece of salad, but it's actually not. It's, as soon as you swallow it, it gets to your stomach and falls apart into tiny crystals. The smaller those crystals are, the higher the surface area, the higher the bioavailability, the faster the reaction, and the, the greater the effect, so you don't have to take access of the medicine, you get uh, lower side effects. Uh, so, with this, uh, we're milling it from 72 microns to about half a micron with the, with the large system. Uh, excipient crystals, I'm, I'm going to skip over some of these. Uh, this is um, a deagglomeration and milling together. So first you deagglomerate, but this is in production of cement. You deagglomerate so that, uh, the particles reduce really quickly and then it's slow and steady. <coughs> Let me show you. Uh, the cell disruption really quickly, uh, you get enhancement in cell disruption efficiency compared to standard methods. Uh, well, this was done with the medium system. And um, this is a degassing experiment. You can get the bubbles out of water-based uh, systems and oil-based or epoxies. Uh, this was done in a beaker just because then you can see it, but really these things are done on a large scale and flow through, uh, uh, flow through scenarios. And with this, so I can conclude that, um, first of all, direct scale up without reducing the amplitude is possible with parable horn ultrasonic technology. And from our experience, ultrasound, ultrasound is becoming the technology of choice for a variety of uh, industrial applications. And I thank you for your attention and taking questions.